Well, Jerry, a game which perhaps understandably took a little while to get going. Well, second half, we were in the ascendancy, so it must be really crushing for Welling to get that late goal. It is frustrating, Mark. That really is frustrating. Yeah, I thought it was a non-event the first half. Whether that, whether being back here had a little bit of a an effect on that, um, you know, obviously the first time back that we we have to discuss first time since since that incident. I'm not going to lie to you. At times during the first half, I'm looking up that end, and obviously you, you sort of recollect that incident at that time. Um, and naturally, players and supporters will do that as well. I thought it was really flat. I thought there was nothing really for anyone to get excited about in that first half. And we spoke about it at half time. We changed the front three around a little bit, put Callum down the middle, put, um, put Els over on the right-hand side, and obviously Scotty then to come inverted because we felt as if we didn't get around the outside of him, so we thought about coming in. I thought it had a massive effect on the game, and then we controlled the game for, from the second half right the way through for 30-odd minutes. I thought we were excellent. It was wave after wave. I'm really pleased for Callum. I thought he had a wonderful game tonight. I think he's looking better and better for us. Nice to see a goal scorer scoring the goals in the six-yard box in and around the poacher's goal, which is what we want. Um, and then we've had some chances after that, Mark, which we have to take. Once, once one or two go in after that, then the game's dead. And always at 1-0, it's a danger they might get a sucker punch, and that's what happened. I don't feel as if we managed the transition well enough. The shot's taken a deflection and flew in the top corner. It's a good strike from the lad. And credit to Welling, they sort of kept going when they had bits, really. Nothing to really get themselves excited about. Um, but for us, that's a really disappointing point because really at home... You know, the way the game's gone, we, we need to be looking at picking up three. You said about Callum Ebanks, I thought for home debutant, he really he warmed the hearts of the fans as well. I think his goal sort of demonstrated what he's like, didn't he? Because he didn't give up. Not many people would have stretched for that ball. He, yeah. he finished it so well and he sort of epitomised his performance, I thought. Yeah, I love his physicality. He doesn't, he's not dissimilar to Anton Semenya when we had him as a 17-year-old kid. He's got loads of physical attributes. Um, loves getting his body into defenders. Loves bumping people. He's got good power about himself. And um, admittedly, the one thing he wants to add to his game since he's come here is more efforts on goal, more shots. And um, you can't argue with that tonight. He's gone and got himself a goal when we put him in the middle of the pitch. He needs confidence. We're trying to build him up and make sure that he gets that whilst with us. He's a young man that I think is out of contract at Cheltenham end of the season, I believe. So he's looking to play for a contract and he's hungry. Like his attitude a lot. But of course, we're missing Cody Cook. We're missing Alex Fletcher. And arguably, if you look at the course of a season, that could be 30-odd goals, 40 goals in our team that we're missing. And um, so we've got other players that need to step up for that. So when these chances come, we need to really take them, whether it's a midfielder or whether it's a front three. So, yep, we, um, we'll be disappointed, but we won't be despondent because we haven't lost the game. We've drawn it. We feel as if we should have won it, but we didn't. And um, we have to patch them up because we've got a few knocks now. Joe's come off, looks, looks a nasty one, real late tackle on him. Jordan will be suspended for Tuesday. And um, Cody's going to have a sort of scan on Tuesday, I believe. So, um, yeah, we'll have to patch him up and go again. The people who've been outside the team, they'll have to, they'll have to come in and make a claim for it. And, and I said to them over this course of time, they'll have to be ready. And hopefully they are ready and go and put in a performance. You mentioned it to me pretty much. I mean, how beneficial do you think it will be having the extra day's break before a, a Tuesday night trip to Hemel? Yeah, it's going to help. Mark, it will help because um, there's a lot of, probably a lot of emotional energy gone in out there tonight. A lot of mental energy but as well as physical energy. So... Yeah, we, um, we need to make sure they recover. We make sure that when we get on that coach, we're ready to go. When we get to Hemel, that's not going to be an easy game on a fast pitch. We do know that when you go and play on a 3G, it's a lot quicker the game, so we have to be able to cope with that first and foremost. Generally, we've played away on 3G this season and done really well. We've got, I think we've won most games, if not all. Always a good game. <laughs> yeah, um, away from home. So that, we'll take confidence from that. Um, but yeah, we need, to, we need to try and pick up some three pointers when you're drawing games. It doesn't really have a massive effect on your league position. And we've seen that with other teams in the league. So even though our performance levels aren't complete over 95, 96 minutes, there's some really good spells on it. And as I said, that 30-minute spell in the second half was excellent from us. Like the first half at St Albans was excellent. Like the game at Billericay was excellent from us. So we're not talking about a team that's out of form. We just need to be a little bit more clinical and kill off games when they're ready. And when we need to... When we smell it, we need to go and do it and go and take it. Also, managing that game when you're just a 1-0 up. I want to win a game 1-0, see if we can manage that and see it out and keep a clean sheet, which we're disappointed with that we didn't do tonight. Knowing the type of character Alex Fletcher is, I know he doesn't like being centre of attention, but obviously today, tonight was about him as well. You were on Points West before the game. We did the mm. applause. You wore, you wore the T-shirts. I mean, in general, how is he doing? Fantastic. Minor miracle to where he's at from where he was three weeks ago. That shows the mental strength, physical capabilities of his body. Um, we spoke about it a lot. The way he's 
looked after him the way he is in, in physical strength has helped him throughout his period of time undoubtedly but also it's just his mental strength he's setting targets already for himself we'll probably have to pull the reins in on him that's the way he is you know what he's like as a character he's taken every day literally as it comes and having a new target every single day um, and he's made some massive strides but he knows he's got a long road we will really look forward to the time when he can be up here be watching a game with us sat on the bench with me maybe watching a game we spoke about that as well he set all his own mini targets at home i don't need to discuss them but they're really good and um, yeah, tonight, tonight was probably about the night where we, we don't wear the t-shirts anymore. We don't do the minutes of applause. Alex has said this, um, but it's important for the home game because we haven't been here since that we did that. I thought it was lovely on, um, on seven minutes to have that minutes of applause. Well done to Welling, their players for Warren and his staff as well and supporters were excellent with it. And to have the lovely banner that our fans had done behind the bath going goal was lovely as well. Um, but now's, now's about focusing. Whilst he's still in the back of our minds in regards of when we play, He's always in the forefront away from football. But when we play, we need to stick that to the back of our minds. We will try and win games for him. Of course, he's a massive part of it. But he wants us now looking forward rather than looking back. So lovely tonight. Lots of really good support still on social media. And we'll, he'll need it still. He's going to have some real down days. But um, for us, it's trying to, trying to now focus back on the football and trying to get ourselves back in that playoff spot where we, where we set our targets where we want to be this season. What's your plans for tomorrow? I should go to a game. Um, gives me a good opportunity to go out and watch a game, watch a player, um, and um, take that in. That's what it does. I can't. No point in just having a free Saturday, um, and then um, and the players get to recuperate and recover as well. So, like I said, we'll have to check in with them all because we have got quite a few bumps and bruises in there. We'll have to come up with a game plan. Obviously, Hemel. We'll have to look at them over the course of time, see what they've done in their last couple of games, and uh, go up there and get a game plan, try and get a positive result. Well, we'll see you on Tuesday, and uh, well, I'm picking up the point tonight. Yeah, cheers, Mark. Thanks, Thanks mate.